This is the Blockade Pinball Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap. Joining me, as always, halfway around the world, is Jared Morgan. Hello, everyone. How are you going? Waving frantically. Waving frantically, yes. For our... Not drowning, waving. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I don't know how your, uh, last two weeks are, but, uh, you know, just to be topical and of the times, um, mine has been trying to chase down a vaccine. <laughs> oh, right. Have you had success in catching the wild vaccine? That's um, super I, I have not had the vaccine yet, but I now have an appointment booked. Hey, so, nice work. Yeah. Very so, good. So I'm, I'm, it's like, hooray, yay, kind of, you know. <laughs> yay, I get to have a needle and hopefully get some sort of immunity from this horrible thing. Yes, but it, so there, there was a, there's a positive note on that front. That's very positive. Um, yeah. Down in Australia, the, the rollout is happening as well. Um, it's being prioritized as it should be to frontline workers um, first and people uh, who are vulnerable. Um, so I'm holding back for now. Um, there's no need for me to get one yet. Um, Ours is prioritized by age and then also by, uh, yeah, what you're working in. They just opened up um, educator and childcare. And since I've been being a substitute teacher for the past couple of months, uh, I qualify for that. So that's how go. I'm in. sliding in on that, uh, on that aspect. Slide on. <laughs> Yeah, well, um, down here we heard news that um, I think I just saw a tweet fly by before I got on the show that um, the UN conspired with Italy to block a shipment of vaccines to us down here. Don't know why. That's all I read in the in the tweet stream. So oh, I don't know why that is. That seems like a bit of a, um, a not nice thing to do. But you anyway. know, there's going to be a new board game uh, of you know, risk. <laughs> but yeah. we're, instead of it being armies conquering other lands, it's going to be countries blocking shipments of COVID, uh, not COVID of the, yeah. but of the uh, vaccine. <laughs> it, it is. Yeah, it totally is. Yeah. Uh, so well, that's good news. I'm glad you're uh, in the queue yeah. um, for it. That's very good. So I'm, I'm um, sure this is what all of you, you know, tuned in for. <laughs> yeah. Cause you know, there's not enough talk about pandemic shenanigans uh, everywhere. Uh, at the moment, you know, maybe so. there needs to be a a COVID pinball machine, though, right? I mean, you know, it's already the little ball. So if you had a custom pinball that had lots of little dots on it, and mm. you know, and as the infection rate grows, the multi ball grows um, until mm. it gets just untenable of how to control. You should um, you should mod a um, Apollo thirteen <laughs> and turn the uh, and turn the moon into a big uh, a big uh, COVID cell. So as it turns, all the little things, you know, come around. Or you could, well, you could also mod a, uh, a World Cup 94, you know, with the big soccer ball and oh, make that. You could. <laughs> yeah. What would the goalie be, though? The goalie would be like your immune system. Well, they... and... <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> then you'd have, then you'd have all that going, goal, a vaccine. What an yeah. amazing jab. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... <laughs> You know, finding humor in a dark subject, but it's, you know, truly, it's, you know, <laughs> you the, uh, when, you, when you drain the third ball, it's just like, you have succumbed to double pneumonia. <laughs> <laughs> Insert random illness here. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, well, before we... <laughs> Never let us design people with we, we didn't We didn't pre-discuss this topic. Um... No, <laughs> it's totally off the cuff. <laughs> That's what happens. <laughs> so, got scripted, everything goes last weird. Last time... <laughs> Last time I had, uh, you know, obviously we were talking uh, a lot about at games and uh, what we wish they would do better on certain mm. aspects. And You're one of the things that, deep on it. yeah, one of the things that I had uh, mentioned about was the how they kind of hide things. You might say with I was saying about pricing and what games are on, and I we received a few messages basically saying, hey, you're not looking very hard, hard or enough. in the right not, spot. You're not using the internet properly. It's right here in front of your nose behind these couple of clicks. And so, sure <laughs> enough, they're correct. There is listing, and you can find these things. That being said, it's still not the easiest thing in the world. So I just wanted to kind of show, if you're looking for it, here's how to find it. 
and also why it's still just kind of like hmm? um it's okay show us the user experience of the let's see the user experience. Experience. okay so this is the main page uh that if you were going to the legends family this is what pops up right on their website cool. and hey look at this you've got all the products. A matrix. We like a matrix. Right. You got all the products, and, you know, I'm just looking right up here. License games included. You got your 300, 150, 100, 120, all 22, that. right? Here's what I'm wondering. Why isn't the 300 clickable to show you what the games are? Yeah, that would make sense. That would make sense. Right? Oh, that would be that. what you want. <laughs> but that's not how you're going to find out what the games are. No, instead, what you're going to do is you're going to click on the item... And then you're going to go, okay, now I'm on Legend Ultimate. And then you're going to go, oh, view games list. And, oh, look at this. It's just a PDF spreadsheet. Why, Woo, why PDF? You can, make, you can make an HTML page with that very easily. It's just, you know, and, and then what you're dealing with is having to, okay, so great, you've got this long list of games. But, like, for instance, you have Asteroids and Asteroids. And yeah. one says console and one says arcade. It doesn't say exactly which console, but I do believe it's the Atari 2600 version of Asteroids, um, as opposed to the arcade version of Asteroids. Um, but, but Chris, it doesn't matter what console it is because it's just a console. <laughs> right. You wouldn't want to filter on that information so you no. can see if your favorite no. console is actually on the list of included games that you get with your product. No, and, you don't and, want that. And this is just, you know, no. it's 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 not visually appealing and it doesn't speak to you very fast. It's not. And now you have this to... this an HTML page and put some filters on it. Like, right. It's you not know. hard. So that's that's that, where I just kind of go... Okay, great. Now I got to... You know, maybe, it's, maybe it's iteration one of this aspect of the website. Maybe the list is changing too much that it's hard for them to maintain a website page right. on it. Maybe. So the other thing that I was saying was that the pricing of ArcadeNet was hidden, and uh, and I was thinking that's where the game goes. So if you were to go here under Legends Arcade Platform and you go and select ArcadeNet, which I had no reason why I was going to do that, but here we go. Here's ArcadeNet, and okay, fine. Hey, look at that. Here's your pricing for ArcadeNet. Um, and I'm glad that they at least made, you know, basically said, Look, if you pay for the monthly, one month at a time, you're a sucker. Because um, <laughs> mm. the six months is basically half that price. It's still going to yeah. wind up being 120 for the year, which is twice the price of what Xbox Live or PlayStation Network is. All right, Chris. Well, what do you get for that? So what you get, well, okay, so here's the arcade game, arcade net game list. Okay. And you're thinking, oh, okay, great. Look at all these genres. Look at all these platforms. Cool. Cool. Yeah. And I'm looking down here and I notice, okay, this is displaying 1 through 20 of 104 titles. So oh. it's 104 titles. Okay. And I'm thinking, okay, well, hey, let's, hey, why don't we click on this Atari and see what we get? Oh, no oh. games found. Okay, okay, let's click on uh, ColecoVision. No games found. Okay, how about oh, okay. Sega Genesis? Well, oh, this one. Four games I've never heard of. Okay. What, uh, um, let's go. Okay. Hold on. I want to make a point here. Sega Master System. Yeah, doesn't add anything. Game Gear doesn't add anything. Uh, SFC, whatever the heck that is, doesn't add anything. Um, <laughs> Deco Cassette System. Okay. Well, it added one game. Uh, it's a challenge? <laughs> you know, a skater? Uh, what, what did it add, though? I don't it, know. Just it added tell. skater. It added skater. Oh, okay. Because um, there's no classification on each of the tiles about what platform they belong right. to. Either, the only time anything really... really interesting happens, I'm going to deselect all these, is when you go Neo Geo. Okay. Oh, there you go. You got 28 Tw Neo Geo games that it comes with. Yeah, right. Uh, okay. So that's pretty good. I mean, you know, Neo Geo games are at least, you've probably heard of them. Yes. And they got Alpha Mission too, which is a great shoot 'em up. Pretty right. Good. You know, you got your Metal Slug and uh, all the slugs. Uh, Samurai Showdown. You know, so, okay, that's cool. Let's cool. deselect Neo Geo. Let's go arcade only. Well, then they throw in your pinball machines. Yeah, right. I do like those tiles. How they but those tiles. what the hell is Cisco good. Heat? <laughs> it looks like a outrun knockoff. What is Battle Flipshot or Big Karnak or Birdie Try? Have you ever heard of these arcade games outside of mm, being no. in Japan? <laughs> I, I've heard of Bang Busters before, but not okay. Bang Bang Busters. Not might Bang be Bang the Busters. Sequel. 
No. Point being, why do you list all these platforms when literally only three of them are selectable, more or less? Mm, I can only think that they're doing it for expansion purposes later on. Like they've set up the categories now so that they can add to those categories over time. But okay, that's the only thing I can think of. So does that mean you're going to get a whole lot of Game Gear stuff on, on there in the future? It's just like yeah. a preview of the platforms. I don't know. I don't Again, know. it just kind of feeds into that idea of it's a little bit sneaky. <laughs> <laughs> how these things yeah. are hidden you know you're you're almost like embarrassed by what you have you know if you were proud mm. of the games that you had then you would make I, like that pdf page should look like what the arcade net page is where at least we're getting the yeah. little splash graphic right um it should look like that and it should also have like a number of different ux improvements on it like a, a spreadsheet is not the way to present information on the web anymore like that you know, you can have like data tables that allow you to filter and sort and and do all sorts of stuff. So you can find the information you need easily, not scroll a PDF. Like, that's right. just like Web two thousand. You know, they they want the technology back. You know. Yeah. So anyway, I just wanted to yes make the correction, but also be make my point. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, I think we're probably going to get more mail. <laughs> mail time. <laughs> that's okay. It's okay though. We'll, we'll... Please do send us your mail. Um, with a negative or positive to Chris's direct email account. Because <laughs> at least this way we know you're paying attention. Um, That's right. You know, you made the effort. Tell uh, us that we're wrong because we know we're doing it right. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing I wanted to highlight, um, so uh, there's a, a YouTube channel, Cool Toy. It's run by uh, the guy that does it, is Doug. I don't know what Doug's last name is. Probably doesn't matter. Anyway, um, Doug does really nicely produced video uh for mm. reviews and everything uh um, yeah, very so, good yeah if you if you haven't if you haven't checked him out make sure you check him out um but he just started posting videos of modding his marble one-up cab because mm. as he put it the pcb died and so now he just has a shell and what are you gonna do chuck it in the trash or turn it into something so so I think he, what he said is that at a very basic level, yes, a PCB, but, but it wasn't the game board PCB. It was the interface PCB. So the thing that controls all the buttons and everything. Right. I think the actual, like the things that has all the drivers for the solenoids and everything, the haptics, that auxiliary board failed. And unfortunately, that auxiliary board does a fair bit of stuff in the game. So without that, you've got a cabinet where the buttons don't work and the the actual um, exciters don't work. I mean, the, the actuators don't work, yeah. which is not fun, really. <laughs> so anyway, he shows um, basically like what a down and dirty, cheap way of getting the thing back up and running with a PC running your uh, Steam games that you have, mm. uh, you know, so Pinball FX3, basically. Um, it's a getting... really good tutorial. He really yeah. lays it out well. Yeah. Yeah. And then he has a part two where he starts dumping money into it <laughs> and in making mm. the back glass a full monitor and, uh, yeah. you know, all of a sudden dealing with an actual, the actual plunger. Basically, he bought a virtual pin, a pin plunger a, that yeah, has yeah. also the accelerometer in it for nudge purposes. And there's going to be yet another video uh, after that. Anyway, is definitely going all in, look. basically. He is. He is. Yeah. He's going all in. Yeah. And it's more than worth a look just from this point, which is it makes no sense to buy a one-up cabinet to gut it because when you see the money that's being dumped in to turn it into something, you might as well DIY yourself mm. a much bigger screen and you know bigger everything, right? You pretty much buy it like a junk project pin to get the cabinet and then just gut the thing yeah, and start from, start from there because... It's really it's a sunk cost fallacy if you buy one of these arcade one ups to gut it right now from the outset. It's they're expensive, yeah, for what they give you as far as the existing stuff you get with the product. So, but where it's not interesting a modest, is if not a modest your, one. if your thing failed and you want to turn it, you know, keep on using because you like the form factor and everything else like that. He's you, know, you like the art, etc. On the right. side, he's, of it. he's I mean, you know, a lot of knowledge, so it's definitely worth checking out and uh, and seeing. Yeah. But like. So far, his mod, I'm just doing the math in my head of how much it was costing. Um, without the PC, 
he was already up to, I think, about $170 worth of parts. Um, mm. And that's not including the haptics that he's about to drop in and do a mm. tutorial on. And then you got to add in the cost of the PC, which is probably going to be you know right around 500 bucks for something. I mean, if you've wrong. got one of those, like a lot of people who I think are buying the arcade one-ups that are looking to mod, they probably already have a gaming spec PC, which is ready to go. But the thing that Cool Toy does differently is his PCs are designed to fit underneath the actual right. unit because there's quite a void underneath the unit. Um, it's quite a, a yeah a recess under there. You could put a nice little um, uh, gaming PC, little fort, small form factor PC under there, and it would fit really nice. And you'd be able to access all the all the stuff on it, which is a top idea actually um, to put it under there like that. Yeah, plenty, plenty of really good ideas in there for someone who wants to go down this path. So it's almost like a blueprint for what you can do. See, it's very cool. Yeah. Would recommend. Do watch it. So just wanted to uh, kind of point that out too. Um, it's one of those things I was watching this past week. Our main topic. <laughs> Crap. I really shouldn't have said it that way. See, I'm starting to steal. Like, I've been watching too much of uh, John Oliver's last week tonight. And <laughs> that's that's where you get our main story tonight. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> on tonight's show, <laughs> so we going? didn't we didn't uh, have a show last week, which many of you were hoping were because then we'd get to talk about what was revealed on episode two of the pinball show from Zen pinball show. <laughs> So that is what we're going to be focusing on today, um, mainly being the fact that it's, it, it comes down to a very simple announcement. Uh, Star Wars VR. That's yeah, boy. pretty much what the entire thing was about. <laughs> it's so good. Um, now, I suppose we should start with kind of the trailer. Unfortunately, mm. um, there's a lot of... You know, Star Wars music in it. There's a lot of John Williams music floating around in the Star Wars trailer. Who would have thought? Yeah, right? so we're going to have to watch it on mute because we'll get flagged if yeah. we play that. But yeah, I want... Unless we, like, talk gibberish over the top of no, it. No, that doesn't work. I, I, I've already tried that on one oh, of the really? previous... Yes, when we did our... Uh, our uh, when we showed Guns N' Roses, the pinball machine. And we were uh, talking over... It while it was playing and we still got flagged because <sighs> you could hear the music. So YouTube, need... you're too smart. <laughs> Stop being so smart. You and your robots analyzing our videos. So I just wanted to show because I don't know how many of you uh, uh, were familiar with the with this. I caught it right away, but I'm going to show mm. you just the beginning of way back in 1997. There was a trailer for the Star Wars Special Edition coming out. And it looked a little something like this. Let me. I'm gonna. Uh, get my mouse over there. There we go. Here we go. Oh, what happened? <laughs> For its 20th anniversary. Oh. There we go. Now we go. For an entire generation, people have experienced Star Wars. The only Teeny way it's been possible screen. on the TV screen. But if you've only seen it this way. Haven't seen it at all. Okay, gonna stop that before it uh, <laughs> plays. Get... Dun 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 dun. Yep. dun. Yeah. So yeah. The reason why idea. reason why I wanted to play that was now let's look at Zen's trailer for Star Wars VR. For an entire generation, gamers have experienced Star Wars pinball the only way it's been possible on an HD screen. But just wait till you play in VR. Oh, it's the such, exact same kind of intro. Such a nice Love little it. point. It's and, so good. And the point of me of that too is they got permission from Lucasfilm to be able to do that. And they also got the original voiceover guy to do the intro to yeah. the to the thing, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so. Yeah, what, what that's pretty... Hitting the wrong buttons. Hit the wrong one. Hitting the wrong buttons. Um, I I can tell you this much, that I think the level of interaction that Zen is having with Lucasfilm this go-around is a lot more than last round. And I say mm. that strictly because even Lucasfilm Gaming tweeted out the trailer. <laughs> yeah, there, there's a little bit of integration, I think. A little bit of integration. The... So that's kind of... That's Two actually... Parts, that's that's quite exciting. I'm... I'm I'm stoked to to see that. 
Um, it's pretty cool. But all right, so let's we're gonna watch the trailer on mute. But me and Jerry could do commentary. That's we're we're capable. But we'll give it a go. <laughs> um, I feel like I, I wish I just had the script from Old Mate doing the intro. I could read it, read it live as the video is playing. Right? All right, here yeah. we go. So I'm, we're gonna do with without the uh, without the audio here. Finger yeah. on the pause button, ready to go. So obviously we're seeing rebels and Jedi. Wooshka. And then oh go. hey, look at this. This is yeah. There's your your VR room. <laughs> yeah. Your, your den, if you will. So you got the one table right there, smack dab in the middle. Um, little shelving unit for it looks like I'm assuming. I'm assuming everything in here is cl- like crap that you can earn. Looks like it. I mean that's yeah, what I'm like assuming. The, yeah. There's a lot of display areas in this. So, yeah. like, have a look at the shelves over over to the left yeah. and everything. So, there we go with Empire. And, like I said, Jedi. Um, oh, hey, look at that. So, that's uh, from, that is from Empire. It's one of the yeah. modes that you can go into. But it looks like now you get to do a VR mode. Yeah. Like, that you in full VR. You get to have VR. a lightsaber battle. Yeah, it's pretty Which cool. kind of cool. I like that. Yeah. Um, that'll be yeah. different, certainly. Yeah. Um, Oh, Ooh, there we go again. Cool. So this looks different from. Uh, it's the same thing that you play again in in Jedi. You can go into this mode and be able to play this, but I've yeah, but it's s- embedded in the cabinet, right? Mm. So this, this is, is like this is a, full on like you're on the speeder bike and you're controlling it with this mini. Again, it's going to what it's going awesome to look idea. like here. It looks kind of small. Even the the DMD looks kind of small. But I imagine that when you're in VR. It's going to look massive. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I could probably say that because, like, every—I mean, you've you've played some experiences in VR where, you're like, you're, you're looking at a playback video of it, and it's like, oh, th- this is like really tiny. But when you're in it and it's right yeah. there, it, it's way bigger than what. So I'm expecting this to be like incredible. This mode. So yeah, see, yeah, here we go. go. Yeah, this way, yeah. So change decorations. There you go. Yeah, yeah. I knew I'd seen something. Oh, there's there's Mandalorian uh, table. Yeah, that's kind of a crazy view. I don't know if that's a view that you can do while in VR, <laughs> like <It> looks, table view. <laughs> that's kind of crazy. Kind of, it's pretty sweet. Drop right in <laughs> like, there. I've seen Zen do a lot of these, like almost like pre-render, mm-hmm. like views inside the table. So maybe that's just one of them. So obviously, characters to the side, um, just like what they've done on the previous VR. So that was uh, yeah. obviously New Hope, Empire. Jedi. I yep. think they're running through the uh, tables that are here. Uh, Rogue One. Rogue One, yeah. Masters of the Force, boo. <laughs> <laughs> Rebels. Rebels. It's good to see Rebels and, in there. Oh! New table! Oh, what do we have here? This yeah. is Star Wars Collectible, which we'll have the trailer for that also. Um, yes. But here's a brand new table also in addition to the Mandalorian. So, um, that means they've made 21 Star Wars tables. Um, there's Mandalorian. I'm gonna pause on Mandalorian here. I just want to mm. take a look at this. <laughs> I don't think I've I don't think I've looked at this table properly here um, until just this moment. I was like, how come I've not paused? And, There's a lot of stuff at, going on. Look at on what is bed. going on here. You've got this little uh, swirly scoop here. You've got one, two, three, four flippers. Um, I think that swirly scoop is actually the forge um, from oh. from the because um, it's you know where they put the the actual. Um, right, the the, uh, the 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 metal ingots. Yeah, the, oh, the the name of it, the special name, the special metal that's really right. rare, and right. Mando always tries to get it. I think yeah. that's a forge. That thing, because okay. see the little blue things coming up, like the flames. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, it's probably a little bit hard to see in there, but I can see the little things sticking. Up. I've, I'm only seeing this because I've only just watched both seasons of Mando, oh, so right. it's like really kind of making sense all of a sudden, huh? Because this is yeah, going to be basically... Is, yeah. So what they said, and you can... You, it's hard to make out here, but uh, the mm. inserts, these are all the chapter episodes uh, from the yeah, first season. True. So obviously yeah. you're going to be doing modes based... Those are going to be your modes. Yeah. Um, I think... It looks like... If you have a look... at It's a bit hard to see from the shot, but I think... I know. Maybe if I it, play the, a little bit more, it'll it show a little might, bit more. Might go in a bit more. I don't know. Let's see. Nope. It just flipped no, a new That's hope. all you got. <laughs> That's what I, you get. I That's what you... It looks like they're all episodes 
from the oh, that's cool. How it it's it's out. all from the same timeline. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but all I, from I don't all know from the same timeline. Because there's there's if there's two seasons of Mando, um, it looks like there was only like what 10, 10 modes in there. I wonder if they've just done eight. season one. Is it, no, they, they did. They said that's only season one. Season one. Okay. Yeah. That hot. Bring Which on season kind of, two table. That's exciting because then you know, hey, mm, yeah. more table coming coming up, right? Oh, yeah, bring on a season two table. Right. Based on what I've seen there, like, <laughs> hell yeah. Let's have more of that. Um, awesome. So we'll, we'll take a look at the Star Wars collectibles table in a moment. But right. initial reaction to this, everybody uh, went, everybody went sweet. hey, that looks really sweet, but... But here's the problem. It said available on VR yeah. and available on Pinball FX. It did not mm. mention Pinball FX 3. <laughs> yeah, they were quite, and they said this openly in episode two. It's like, yep, it's exciting to say that this is Quest and FX. That's it. Yeah. Which obviously bumped people out because they're like oh my god we're going to have to still wait and screw uh-huh. you vr people for getting first dibs <laughs> yeah saws <laughs> um and i mean even even i'm sitting there thinking uh well i've got my old rift vr is it going to work with that i know that they're designing it for obviously steam the vr question quest 2 they did say steam vr so would that cover yeah Okay. Yeah, you should be able to use your you should be able to use your Rift on on Steam VR. Okay, I'm so new to fine. this, I don't understand the the lingo because even I was going, mm. uh, shoot, I might not even be able to play this table when it comes out for VR. I um, think you might be okay because uh, I think Steam VR is designed to work with with those headsets pretty well, so I think you'll be okay. Okay, I'm gonna check something yeah. real quick here. Um, okay, yeah, I'm gonna let me. Let me bring this up here because this is live has checking the vital information. Facts. Look at there. So it says PlayStation VR, Steam VR, Oculus. Yeah. So Steam VR, you're cool. Steam you're VR, you're cool, and PlayStation VR, you're cool. Yeah, that's going to be um, good news for the console. Now, right? I'm wondering PlayStation VR. So that would be playable, obviously PS4 and PS5, because I believe. PS5 is using the same headset. Mm, I'm not sure. I'm not really into console um, stuff, man. Yeah, you're telling me news here. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe. maybe, maybe. Yeah, but uh, yeah. So that's we don't know when Pinball Effects is coming out. So it is definitely a case of ah, uh, how long is that wait going to be? Well, <laughs> um, from what the original like from in episode episode one. <laughs> the launch <laughs> of TPS. They suggested later this year. So I'm calling quarter four this year. Not financial quarter, uh, but like I'm calling like yeah, know, August, October, end of September. end of end of quarter three, beginning of quarter four is what I'm yep. guessing. Uh, I that so. is that is a it's a long wait. It's a long gap. But Yeah, we're March now. Yeah, that's a lot of months. That's six months at least. Um we have thoughts on that. We're gonna table those for a little bit later though, mm. because the other question that came up is, oh, wait, so this is a Star Wars VR app. Mm. So it's separate. Is this what Zen's going to be doing for all the VR apps? Like, is there going to be a Williams VR app? Is there going to be a just Zen VR app? Um, yeah. Is everything going to be separated? And if so, oh, that blows. I want everything under the same same roof yeah but i had a thought about that because i also had thoughts about that well because i realized (laughs) because jared was had you know been telling me about his quest 2 and the fact that it came in two different versions with different size memory and i went you got 64 and a 256 right gigabyte version well big disparity that means you're storing the game on your headset yeah so it actually makes sense to have smaller chunked apps because it really we does. all know these pinball apps can grow rather large. <laughs> well, look at the amount of like if you I think the the installation size for FX2 VR is something to the order of two gig for mm. for that game, and 
not much more for um, the extra add-on pack. So if you, let, let's say 2.4 gig, and on that package, it's something to the order of like, uh, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. It's a, about 15 tables, I think. Mm, maybe, give or take. Just run with me on this. So okay. if that's 2.4 gig, um, and you look at the total collection of tables on FX3 being over 100 now, right? Um, that's nearly 25 gig just on, like if you just had it in one app alone. So that's now for me with also the the ROM and all the other games on, I've pretty much nearly maxed out my 64 gig of storage. Like I've used about half of it. Which means anytime you want to play a different game other than pinball, you're going to have to uninstall pinball if it was came in a giant chunk, right? Rather yeah. than going, well, I'll just take off. This you're going to have to make some hard right. decisions yeah. if if you do it, and if you don't like, for example, a, a set of like if you for you hate Star Wars, for example, if you don't like it, well then, if you had to like have all that infrastructure in place in the one app to support all that then it wouldn't be any good like you you'd, you'd run out you run into problems real fast and the other thing too is that you know what zen does and we've seen this on mobile before they use their separate app things to try out new things so they, they use their brands to try out new new things with the products so they can actually iterate fast on things and like keep things separate and there is advantages of course for the license holders having it like that because they can say the license the licensors love it because it just yeah because it's their spotlight yeah it's their product yeah it's got an like standalone entry in the app store it comes up in search results for that brand it's like advertising for them yeah so while it may be a little inconvenient to to go between apps. Let me tell you what that would look like because I've switched between you know Pinball FX and another app that I've got on there. It's literally oh, I'm done with this app now. Oculus menu, quit. Back to your your lobby. Select the other game. You're in. So thirty seconds. Okay. Thereabouts. You actually go from one app to another app. It's not a big deal. Now, if they're going to be using the, let's say that let's this is speculation here. Let's say that they're going to be using the Pinball FX um, base product. So the baseline, let's call it ecosystem framework for FX, and they're going to roll all these brands on top of that framework. Then what you'll have is consistent leaderboards across all the apps. You'll have consistent challenge mode, challenge mode integration stuff across all those apps. But the thing that'll be different is the product you're offering and the experience. Should, again, speculation, should they go down the path of making more of these VR experiences for Oculus and having these apps separate like they have? Yeah. So, you know, what does I'm that actually do? kind of jazzed about that. What does that do, though, great. for like, okay, so currently we have Pinball FX 2 VR. Yes. Is that only on the Steam store or is that available on the Quest 2? I can get yeah, I can install that on all Oculus devices. So if I have a, a Rift, a, a Quest, a Quest 2, um, anything that's by Oculus, it's they've activated cross buy on that. So once you buy it once, you can play it on any hardware you own. Any okay. Oculus hardware. I was just True wondering. I was just wondering if they're going to do a full reset. Um, so again, would they come out with Universal uh, Studios VR um, and have that be a separate pack? So it would have the the, the monsters tables, uh, the Universal monsters, Jurassic Park, and then mm. the uh, uh, Back to the Future ET and ET, uh, Jaws table. Because those tables, not the Jurassic Park, but the uh, ET Jaws and Back to the Future, are available in FX2 FX2 VR. Yes. So uh, that's why I'm kind of wondering. I wonder how they would go about doing that. Would they? Would they? I, ca I can't imagine that they would continue using the FX2 VR to put in other. No, that's a dead. Platform, it's, a, yeah. it's a dead platform. Yeah. Um. 
it, it, well, it has to be a dead platform now. Like it's, uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. It's I played it just the other day. Right, it's it still, still functions. It's not, yeah, <laughs> it's very good. Like it's not abandonware like Farsight stuff. But it is. But I imagine they could probably do better with what with the new platform. With the new platform. Oh, I'd imagine so. Like based on what we see in that in that experience, like having a look at the the FX two lobby experience and having a look at what you get in the Star Wars VR app, it's a like it's way more interactive. It looks like you can actually like what they, they have this term in VR called locomotion, which means basically you can move around and how you move around in VR. And that looks like you can't just be in a fixed position. It looks like you need to like walk around hmm. inside that space to get to things. Cause like, you know, there's a, a o- over the far end, there's like a trophy cabinet. How are you supposed to navigate to that? Like it, it seems right. like you're walking around, which is kind of cool because that's, not how it works in FX too. It's no, like, FX two, you're you're a static spot. Yeah, or yeah, you're, you're fixed spot in your lounge, and then you you can actually look around your environment, and that actually selects the pinball machine that yeah. you're looking at. Now, I, I don't know, like, I'd like to see my lounge with a few more pinball machines in it than just one. Yeah, you know? <laughs> as as we've seen with you know people displaying their arcade one up, you know, mini arcades. They got like a whole walls of these things. It looks like, cool when you got a bunch. It kind of looks sad when you only have one. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's very much a feature right in that mm-hmm. area, and that's pretty cool. But the thing I really like about um, the FX2 VR is how the environments change. All the environment. Right, the entire environment you. switches. Like when you're, in, when you're in Paranormal, it goes into like this like really dark jungle environment. It looks so cool. You're, like, you're looking out the windows, and you're seeing this complete environment change around you. I wonder how they're going to do that in this app. I wonder if there's going to be some like environmental effects yeah. ar- around the the table, apart from the characters. Like, are you going to get immersed in you know like the the set pieces? Like, uh, um, right. So, like, if you were uh, in Jedi, and all of a sudden you you would select that table, that maybe the walls and everything kind of become foresty, you know, or the green yeah, or the yeah. lighting changes to green. Um, you know, maybe there's a grass patch now, you know, by your yeah, that'd like be that. cool. Or, or if you're playing Empire, that everything goes to ice. Um, that would be. Like that That'd real be what immersion I would is what, <laughs> yeah, because that real immersion is, it's kind of what you want in VR. You want that that break from reality. It's almost like with this thing, it seems like your your like lair or whatever it is, your your den, your, your Star Wars your dungeon, yeah, <laughs> yeah, with all the cool stuff in it is the environment. Well, what did and, what did what did Ecos call it, or was it Ecos that said it? It was the uh, the basement. The basement. Um, because the they had cab under the, the staircase there. Yeah. Yeah. Also, very confusing. Too many ACOSs at Zen. we got to fix that, guys. <laughs> yeah. Stop it. <laughs> ACOS must be like John in England, in English. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, that's a Anyhow, that's side. It is Anyhow. interesting, though. So, I mean, because I've also heard this brought up recently how people are like, oh, it's only going to have eight tables to start with. I so much prefer Zachariah just having everything available in VR. And like we said, it's one thing to do VR where you just flick a switch and it's VR. You got VR. But it's not it's not pleasing to be in for an extended period of time. Mm. Um, as opposed to this idea of a lobby to be able to look around to exit the game, be able to look around. It would be cool if you're able to move around a little bit. Um, like if you've got room scale, uh, like it's turned on in your VR, and you've got a big space that your VR is tracking. I think the space is scaled. It looks like it's scaled well enough that you could probably walk around. You could at least walk around the table okay. if you are indeed walking around the like if you're walking around this environment or locomoting through the environment. I reckon you could actually do that physical walk around the table and actually have a look into the details of the table from different angles if mm. you had the space. Now, that is something you can't do on FX2, and that would be really cool. Yeah, FX2, I you think. can only lean to the side. You can lean into the sides. You can't do a full lap around the table. I haven't tried. Well, so, you know what? I don't know if you can or not. I have not tried it um, because I bump into a wall. Yeah, I've, <laughs> um, I've got... I've gotten I, I, I've gotten all the way to the back of the table though and looked back forward. 
Oh, you have? Yes. So you've actually looked forward into the... Oh, there you go. So you can do it in FX2. But I've never, but I've never gone behind the back class. Okay. Right. Well, that's something to try. That'd be Let funny if there was, you know, the little the little CE electrical warning label on the back of the back, <laughs> the back box. <laughs> See the cord coming yeah. down. It would be really cool if they did that. It, it'd be kind of cool if they had some sort of Easter egg right. behind there. You know, like 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 you say, like a like a CE label or something that yeah. like is funny. Uh, that'd be cool. <laughs> I'd like to see that. <laughs> All right, we're just, you know, just just to reward you for walking around the back of the table like some sort of stooge. Uh, <laughs> all right, we're, we're we're going off the rails here. Let's uh, let's uh, we do that regularly. Yeah, yeah let's let's settle price. back in. Let's take a look at the uh, the new table that was announced, which was uh, Star Wars collectibles or classic yeah. collectibles, I guess is what it's yes. actually being called. So let's bring. I'm just not even going to play yet. I'm just going to go check out the action figures. That's rad. It's um, pretty sweet. Yeah, <laughs> I, I just I just like that right off the bat. Looks Is like there's like, a um, Commodore sixty four in the background. Uh, yeah, <laughs> or the key. That, that, you know, the... Is that sort of like uh, I wasn't really into the Star Wars collectibles at the time. Is that sort of like what the box would look like if you're in a retail store? Like thematically, you'd have like the top card would be that sort of art on it. And you'd yeah, have, it like, was the it was a big it was title just... card down the bottom. Yeah, you just had the big Star Wars across the top, and then it had the the blister pack with the the figure just floating yeah. in it, and then yeah. to the side of that was an image from the movie. Ah, there you go. So, so they they pretty much emulated that feel. Yeah, in in there, which is cool. Uh, so this one is Star Wars music the entire time. So while we play, look this, at that. Before you, know, you go, about, dun, 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 dun. Yeah. before you go, look at the brand on the TV, Universum. Universum. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Uh, very funny. Uh, here we go. So we're playing Wooshka. Whoa, look at that thing. Hello, what? Jackpot. Wait, what thing? Hold on. <laughs> look at the big go. curly tower. Look at oh, the big curly great. tower. Hello, Jackpot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> looks like, it's, like so it's, it. So it's captured ball. Uh, probably. Yeah, it looks like a maybe ball. a magnet yeah, there ball. or something. I'm not sure. Is it that? No, that's just a stand. I think that's I see a light. It. It's right over here. It's the same thing. So that's just a stand-up yeah, target. Yeah, it's a stand-up target. Yeah. Um, but uh, the, even these little lightsabers, they look like very toyish. Yep. Um, yeah, very toyish. So I'll go through here. Looks like we got a little toy falcon there. Got the X-wing yeah. in the back. Straight up action figure, uh, Jabba Ooh, Hutt. Look at, looks like Jabba the Hutt to blow up. Look, oh no, that's how actually. The, well, I mean, I see what you're saying from the glossy, but that was how the uh, the cowboy the... was. Was you yeah. wiggled the, his head and the tail wiggled. Oh, so when you, when right. You okay. His head, it would wiggle the tail. So they've actually got the original. I've obviously done. I would be curious to know if they if they deep. licensed from Hasbro um, or Kenner. Well, because I think Kenner Toys got bought out by Hasbro. So I assume Hasbro, they'd yeah. be, but I, I'm curious to know if they licensed their molds. Or I reckon they probably would have just. Or if their action collectors. figures are slightly different enough that they don't have to claim. I don't know. That's kind of interesting. Boing! There's, there's, I love that. There's just like this eject of the action figure and then it comes to life. And they actually come out of the. It's like they come out of the play field. Like well, they, they, they come out of the out packaging. Of the yeah, it's, it's, a, yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a spring that. A spring, that yeah. Popped it. It's freaking cool. I like this. And they, the, and the, they look like toys. I was going to say, hold on. Like, let, me go, let me go back there to, uh, to what Chewie looked like. So Chewy, okay. So here's the thing: Chewy was never articulated that way. <laughs> oh, okay. I he, mean, he didn't... you know, he didn't. No, he was a stiff arm. He went like he okay. went like that. That was that okay. was the extent of Chewy's arms. Um, okay. But obviously, that would be boring for animated purposes. So I wonder when yeah, he's in the box hot, if he has these, if he's got the the elbow joint or not. Um, hmm. All right. Well, it looks like there's locks in the back there. We can see that. There's almost like yeah, a, there's a multi-ball, lock one, lock it's two. It's like a ramp. It's like a ramp at the back there or something, maybe. Yeah. I don't know what that is. That thing in the middle that you're hovering the mouse over looks interesting. Right. It looks like a... Uh, a loop thing. Is it, I was going to say loop, or does this maybe... Do these block and come down? So, like, you have to open the... Like, do they hinge up and down? It looks like they hinge. kind of looks like a hinge. Yeah. I don't know. It almost looks like they're kind of emulating the TIE fighter wings. Right. That's what I was thinking myself, too. Emperor all sitting back there. Thoing! Figures flying all over the place. 
I think they said that there was 12 action figures that could be collected. 12. Relive classic moments. Oh, yeah, see? See the yeah. thing moving? Go back yeah. a bit. Hold on, hold on. Ah, pause. <laughs> Where's the pause button? I think this is where the moment that you're... Yeah, the thing that, that on, loop thing moves. Get my... Oh, yeah, it's closed right there. Yeah. Yeah, okay. And that's all the figurines. That's pretty cool. Oh, yes. Yeah, so and look at that. Pinball okay. FX, Star Wars Pinball VR. Hold on, I gotta... I not gotta... Pinball FX 3. I gotta see what action figures that they have here. You got Han, Jabba, Jawa, Lando, Leia, Luke, Luke Obi Wan, Scout Trooper, Stormtrooper. Yeah. Is what? There's like fifteen. I thought they, I thought it was twelve. Twelve. I thought I thought that's what uh, Mel had said in the uh, episode. Okay. Um, could be. Anyway, that's uh. that's pretty cool. That's interesting. That's an interesting looking table. I mean, for for a Zen original to come up with something completely on their own, but still fit into the vibe of the era that they're playing with, because um, we're really doing nice we're dealing with classic trilogy. Um, you know, it's a question of how it plays. Ultimately, obviously, it it looks like there's a lot of interesting stuff to interact with there. There's a lot of I can see like Zen originals always play homage to other tables. So you've got elements of um jackpot with the spiral um, oh, yeah. and and right and sorry um pinbot sorry originally with the spiral and jackpot um so it looks like they've done something different with that spiral though it looks like there's two paths that you can take on it from from the video which okay. will be interesting to see and that diverted thing up the back mm -hmm. that's going to be interesting to see how that interacts with the ball and what it allows you to do because it looks like it's it's like an integral part to how you access ramps i just just from the way yeah. the balls were like flying around it so let's think That's here a minute though about licensing because it's our favorite topic um yeah licensing that uh, they, i mean obviously again it's not just a matter of licensing with lucasfilm style yeah they're it's licensing like a, with a toy company also again if assuming now nowhere does it mention I mean, in the, you know, in the fine print at the end, it doesn't say Kenner or Hasbro. Um, no. That'll be a question that we'll have to... See bring. if we can get an answer from yeah, someone, from from somebody. maybe Mel. You know, what that is. But it does... We keep on coming back to this idea that once they went with Embracer Group, that there was an influx of capital. Influx of capital allows you to do bigger and larger ideas. and More grandiose yeah. things. Yeah. yeah. And this would exactly be that sort of thing. Licensing with a toy company to put their toys into yours and, and to be able to do that. So and that's a very big like that cross licensing, if this is the the way that Zen is going to position themselves in what was going to be their ten year plan, but seems to now be their I think Mel said at one point it would be like a three and a half year plan now with all the <laughs> with all, with the money bin of money that they're rolling around in from Embracer um, if this is the approach then we're in for a wild ride because well and again be... I keep on coming back to that they want they're wanting to uh, find inroads to the Asian market yeah and toys and collectibles are definitely a big part of that um, oh yeah! You know, I just think of your, you know, all the Hello Kitty stuff. Can you imagine a Hello Kitty table? <laughs> oh, it'd be so pink. <laughs> um, <laughs> it'd be incredible. <laughs> yeah, but it, how many units would it shift? A lot. <laughs> That's how many. Right. It's, you know. So so I think that we're seeing glimmers and glimpses of of what we can expect. Um, if you them. put your if you put your crystal ball into play and you you look at the evidence in front of you there there's a there's some stuff going yeah. on yeah and look we make no bones about it we're we're definitely half glass full kind of guys um yeah well we, we roll with the why, punches. why would you want to be negative uh, like you, you could you could totally easily be negative about this oh and, absolutely but but if i'm already a fan of the game why. i want to look for the positives and and find things that i want to get excited about regarding mm. it leading up to the point of playing. Once I'm like I said, 
I'm sure that when I first saw Masters of the Force, I was like, ooh, hey, that looks, oh, yeah, oh. And then I played Masters of the Force, and I went, this game right. sucks. So, yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. It, is, it, it looked really shiny. <laughs> and it looked really, really cool. And then you play it and you go, hmm, okay, what's the next table? Yeah. Uh, um, as opposed to, I don't know, like, maybe Star it will translate Assault, better in. Awesome. Um, <laughs> I, I wonder if it will work better in VR. Like sometimes, you know, like think of like paranormal in in flat screen. Paranormal in VR is night and day from incredible. Yeah. So I wonder if that because that table, like the muscles of the force table, always struck me as just being a mess. Like it, yeah, it's it a didn't have mess. enough depth. It didn't have enough depth in it to actually comprehend what was I'm going also, on. In the game. I'm not a fan of splitting the play field in half with imagery. That that's mm. hard on my eye. Um, they're, they're, and that's not the only table that has done that either. Um, I, it was like Starfighter did the same thing, didn't it? Yeah. Like there was, yeah. Yeah. But it I, makes me think though, like, like, you know, we were talking before about what this VR platform is going to be the start of. Like they, you're saying they got, this will be 21 tables now. We see eight in there at the moment. Uh, I, th- I mean, they even hinted sort of in um tps2 that well you know if it's if it's popular enough we might see some more tables in the in the future coming to the the vr platform it's like it's going to be popular (laughs) people are going to buy this thing i mean if you if you want pinball on vr you've got fx2 vr and now this and that is your only options well i was gonna say it also gives them a chance to okay so they they drop eight Star Wars tables. And mm-hmm. then let's say next they go, hey, here's eight Williams tables. And then after that, they drop, you know, some Zen tables. But it gives the team a chance to, uh, yeah, gauge interest, but also not have to prepare everything Pump for out. a giant dump that it, they can be spread out over time. Because um, yeah. I think that's certainly... That was, that for the VR yeah, they got people, the one. yeah. For the VR people, you don't want to all of a sudden have here's everything and it's going to cost you this much. No, that's a big ticket shock. That's a yeah. ticket shock. Hell, that. yeah. So you want to like you want to be able to stage it out so you you pay whatever this is going to be um, on release, um, and then um, you like you know maybe three months down the track, six months down the track when you sort of explored the games that they have on there and really had fun with them you go oh there's there's i don't know three more six more yeah. i don't know how they do it you know um you could even probably split it up the way they've split up the packs on steam mm-hmm. and like group them just like do a carbon copy of that dlc but just release them in vr and then you know they'd have time to do all the all the extra character animations and and i, I guess in some ways it's probably maybe easier for them to not theme the environment like they did in in fx2 vr because it means all they need to do is plonk you in front of the pinball machine have a few characters doing things around you and then that's it you don't have to worry about re-theming the entire room and because i imagine that's that's probably non-trivial to do no Um, you're probably right so that would allow them to actually release more frequently these these um, DLC packs yeah. potentially by having that static sort of environment like this is the environment change the characters you're done ship it I, I know it's not as easy as that <laughs> but it's easier if you don't have to worry about all the other environment stuff right so so let's kind of talk for a moment and this pure here we go speculation we there's plenty of that in this our, show. Let's our, our other favorite thing stuff. beyond licensing we love speculating um yeah so people were, like we said, they're a little upset over the fact of we don't know when Pinball FX is coming out. And therefore, if they don't own VR, there's this large gap between when they're being able to buy more tables for their thing. And they're like, mm. this is unacceptable. I want tables now. So the other thing that we don't know, and it, it can go any number of ways on this, right? But we don't know, are your previous table purchases going to carry forward into pinball effects. And as I mm. argued before, 
The licensors certainly don't want that. They want that second bite of the apple. Yeah, um, they want more money, thanks. That's <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and and to be honest, skin. I'm saying this is why Lucasfilm is working with Zen right now. They pumped out a completely separate game for Switch. Not that Switch had the yeah. ability to buy uh, Star Wars previously, but boom, they pumped out a separate game for that. Now they're doing it for VR. So yeah. if you owned it on the Switch... And then you want it in VR, there's bite number two, right? And yeah. then let's say you also had it on the PC, boom, there would be that bite number three. On mm -hmm. tables that were made, what, eight years ago? On yeah. some, some of them? Uh-huh. So as far as Lucasfilm is concerned, they're like, well, yeah, that was eight years ago. Come on, keep the revenue going. You know, yeah. you want the license? You want to keep the license? This is what you're going to have to do for us. This is where my, my head is. Is going. No, it makes sense because you know the eight years is a long time to have exclusivity on on a license like this, right? Like now, uh, it's possible yeah. in that same kind of vein that maybe all the Zen originals carry over. Maybe. So mm. uh, you know, I, I don't. Maybe I, it's because they own the properties. Exactly. Maybe that's they would what own, you and get. Not, there's no residuals that they have to pay out to anybody other than yeah. themselves. Okay. It would make sense that they come over and they would almost be like you like you download Pinball FX later on in the year and you get those tables maybe included, maybe, because they're owned by Zen. So maybe you have to throw them in like, right. hey, here's a starting lot. I don't or you know. buy the app, buy the app and you know it's like 20 bucks, but you get all these tables and they're probably going to be like, retouched with new physics and stuff like that, right? So it'll be a different experience on them. So anyway, Maybe. let's let's I don't know. <laughs> again before we Speculation go too far, again. Again, before we go too far in the weeds in, in one direction, I mean we're gonna we're gonna focus in on this. Let's assume mm. or not assume, let's again pretend that this is the case, right? That it is going to be a case of tables aren't going to be transferring over. Yeah, so buy them if again. Zen is holding things like Mandalorian and Star Wars collectibles from you being able to purchase until Pinball FX comes out, isn't that kind of an actually a ethical business decision rather than Probably. letting you buy it now and then saying a few months down the line, oh, you're going to have to buy it a uh, second time, in which case everybody's going to be really pissed off about that too? Yeah, well, yes, as long as they they couldn't have done some sort of like interim deal with... Um, uh, Lucasfilm to say, hey, look, if anyone buys it on this platform, they get automatically upgraded to this one. True. Uh, late, later on, they could have they could have done that. Like this is true. Yeah, but so that's also that's this also makes me wonder because I don't think there isn't a reason why some of these tables couldn't wind up coming to FX three, but obviously Zen was going to want you to be in Pinball FX. This is where this is the vision for yes. it, right? Mm. So I would almost wonder if it's a case where things will become to pinball effects and then a couple months down the road, hey, do you want it for FX3? You can buy it for FX3 if you didn't want to go the pinball effects mm. room. Uh, you know, for whatever reason, you didn't want to go there. You know, Because again, we don't know. It might be like what happened with uh, pinball effects 2 where a couple of the titles... The licenses don't drop off. They drop off. They don't carry over to the next one. In which case, Maybe. you're like, but I'm still going to be playing pinball effects, and I'd rather everything be there. I don't know. There, there's I don't know many either. ways that this can go, but I am kind of leaning towards the idea that Zen is using this as a clean break. They had the past 10 years. They're looking mm. forward to the next 10 years. Pinball effects is it. And if you have to have a clean starting from ground zero, square one, point this is it yeah i think you know i think having the clean delineation between like fx3 like the old version style fx's to this new versionless windows 10 version of pinball fx it might be a bit of sticker shock to start with like when if if they are having if you will have to rebuy everything, but I think the chances that you have to rebuy everything again in the short to medium term would probably be reduced significantly. 
because of the way you, you know the Windows 10 model where you've got one version of Windows now and you just keeps getting patches for it and you don't have to buy a new version to get them. So if you have all your games under this Pimble FX platform, then you'll need to rebuy them again, say in three years' time, because it seems to be up until now it was like a three-year cadence on platforms, right? Like FX2 mm-hmm. to FX3, that was around for pretty much a console lifestyle. Yeah, it's a console life, life cycle. Right? Yeah, so if they've just got this Pimble FX platform and they license things accordingly, say, hey, look, this is now perpetual on this platform for X number of years, like say, let's say six. No idea if that's what it is, but let's go six years. That way, people won't have to, once they buy them on this platform, they won't have to rebuy it again. If they come in from day zero and buy it, they'll have it for six years. Of course, people who come in three years down the track won't have that, but you know they'll still have it for three years or something Cause I'm Because like I'm even wondering if, and this is looking at the Switch, if it'll be a case of, yeah, Marvel pinball tables just plain aren't available until they come out as a pack. Yeah, the Star Wars is going to come out as a pack. I don't think. I don't think that. I don't think the Steam version is going to be, uh, or I should say, the PC version. I don't know. What, again, we don't know what this is all being released on. Um, mm. But uh, I don't think that that's going to be fractured into different things. No, I think. I think the PC audience kind of has set the bar about what they want from a user experience there. Yeah. And I think on on the consoles, potentially as well, um, so on your PlayStation, your Xboxes, I've got a feeling that that is going to be Pinball FX as a platform and all your DLCs contained inside there. But I think on Oculus... Well, Switch is kind of that weird mobile thing, almost. I like, think they're going to be separate. And, and I think it, you're right with the with the VR, it'll be separate. Yeah, I think it's going to be separate on on the VR platforms. And there's, like we discussed previously, there's architectural reasons why you might need to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and likewise on the Switch, because the Switch has limited space as well. Yes. PCs, consoles typically don't. They have large hard drives that you can install things on. Yeah, your uh, Switch it, doesn't have a one terabyte hard drive on it. It does not. <laughs> so you've got space concerns there. So segmenting them up into brands is a great idea as much as people will probably push back on that it actually makes a lot of sense to do that from a space management perspective so yeah so where were we going with this thought process though oh yeah i was saying (laughs) (laughs) somewhere we always go somewhere no i think i think that this is where i'm just kind of looking at the uh trying to find positives in potential negatives um yeah, because there's going to be so people the, out there going, you want me to rebuy everything? Get stuff. Yes, so like, absolutely. No, you're gonna, thank you. Right. And and they're yeah. going to be, and again, same with the people that are like, and I have to wait how long? Screw Get that. Get stuffed. Right. <laughs> like, no way. I don't want to wait till the end of the year. But the but the yeah. flip side of that to me is, hey, if, if Zen is purposely holding these things back because they also don't want the backlash of, you just sold this to me, and now I can't even carry it over to the next version i'm gonna have to buy it all over again if it's always like you can be angry with us now or you can be angry with us later but you're gonna be angry with us so (laughs) whenever you want to do that doesn't matter when we're just like (laughs) you know (laughs) yeah i I, again Uh. it'll be very interesting to see i i'm dying to know i'm i'm really dying to know what (sighs) i as much as you guys sit there and go, we want info. How come there's no communication? Believe me, we want info too because oh uh, yeah, we've speculated ourselves in circles on on all the potential possibilities that can come here, and basically we've set our expectations at a nice neutral so that we're not peaking high or you know delving low. Yeah. It's it's just kind of like just let us know the info so that we know how to react uh, at a at a more visceral level there. Mm, give us a little bit to chew on so that leading up to the launch later on in the year we can sort of like then speculate based on on fact about what that might look like rather than just like well, I'm we the, don't know it's, anything it's, it's more anything. like we're not going to get ourselves into a tizzy over something that isn't yeah you know 
Um, so I need to get worked up over something that's not actually going to be an outcome anyhow. So yeah, because I mean, I was literally just having this discussion in a thread about people that are worried about it being a subscription model. Um, that everything is going to be you pay a subscription and that's how you're going to get your, uh, you know, your tables. And I'm like, are you guys all at games players with arcade now? Oh, um, <laughs> hmm. well, you know, they, they do have things like you know, the Google Play now has their own subscription based model, as do iOS. So, you right. know, I think that the Zen tables and stuff have actually ended up on there, or sorry, not Zen tables, I think they've got the other brands. Have been on their like, but I'm talking get... about people that are worried that if they're not going to be able to purchase the tables cleanly outright, outright, oh yeah, at all, that they're freaking out. And my my point in the thread was, you're creating a problem that doesn't exist yet, mm. so that you can complain about it, so that then if the problem never materializes, you can go, yes, all of our complaining mattered. Yeah, when. Well, it may not have been on the table to begin with, so you just basically patted yourself on the back. Um, that's yes. not to say that you can't address those concerns and be like, God, I really hope that it's not a subscription this. only, that we have this option, because this is what, you know, obviously you as consumers need to to, to proclaim what it is that you want. Um, hmm. But there is that there is that factor of, Sometimes you don't know what you want until you're presented with it. Yeah, well, you know, it's a Henry Ford model, isn't it? Like, yeah, you know, you don't you don't want a car; you just want faster horses until right. you have a car, and then you realize, oh, that's actually quite good. Right. You know. So hmm. we're we're in the dark. We don't know. Um, it's it's very much a a guessing game. And seeing where we're going, you know, it's just a matter of writing the comments and seeing what people are saying. And and like I said, yes, we're always going to look for the silver lining. That's that's us. Uh, yeah. If so... you don't like that, then you're tuning into the wrong station. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, but... we are you know, Captain Positivity here. Um, As anybody yeah, that, yeah. that noticed us all the way during our Farsight years, um, you know, yeah. it's not that we quickly turned on Farsight. It's that suddenly we got something better. Yeah. That was... And we went... You're dead oh, to us, Farsight. right? <laughs> that was why we didn't know this was bad until we saw somebody do it much better. Um, so. Yeah, and then we went, yeah, Farsight, no. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Farsight kind of went no themselves. Um, yeah, they, they went, they noped out of everything. <laughs> yeah. All yeah. right. Well, we are. Uh, we're gonna. We're that. That's our show. That's, wow. We kind of that's... went spaghetti here. Um, yeah, enjoy <laughs> slicing that up into, into <laughs> black eight minis, mate. Oh, good lord. <laughs> um, <laughs> we are back in two weeks, I believe, is what our schedule will tell us. I think so. Um, yes. What it'll be about is a good guess, but you can maybe drop us ideas for what you'd like it to be about. Just, mm. uh, you know, right down there at the uh, Twitter, send us a message. Um you can also drop us an email at blah, 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 kate at gmail.com. Uh, mm. We certainly enjoy interacting with those stuff. Drop a comment in YouTube on, on this. Let us know what it is you want us to discuss and talk about. We're more than happy to take suggestions on that stuff. Uh, mm. But beyond Excellent. that, what next week will be about? Stuff and things. There you go. All right, until next time, folks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.